The next thing I want to work on is adding a range to the turrets. We'll begin that by going into the turret class and adding a new variable at the top here. So just before the cooldown variable, I'll add another one, which will be called self.range. And I'm going to manually define this to 90. So similar to cooldown, I manually enter them for now until we automate this later on. When the enemies come within this range of the turret, the turret will be able to fire at the enemies. But I want to be able to visualize what this range actually looks like. To do that, I'm going to come down here underneath where I set up my image and I will create another image for the range. I will say create transparent circle showing range. Now this will be done in two stages. The first is to create a surface. I'll say that self.range image is equal to pg.surface. The surface is going to be a square. So I'm going to take that self.range variable and multiply it by two because the range is a radius. And I'll do the same thing for the height. That creates my surface. I'm then going to fill that surface with a color black. So I'm going to pass in RGB values here of 0, 0, and 0. And then I will use that same color as the color key. So I'll say range image dot set underscore color key. And I will set this to black again. That will allow me to change the transparency of this image. Now I'm going to draw my circle on top of this surface. I'll say pg.draw.circle. The target surface is the range image. The color is going to be gray 100. Then I need the x and y coordinates of the center, which will be my self.range, because again, this is a radius. And then lastly, the radius of the circle, well, that's also self.range. Now I'm going to set the transparency of the surface. I will say self dot range underscore image dot set underscore alpha and I'm going to set this to 100. You can play around with this value to change the transparency of the image. And next, to allow me to position this, I will need to create a rectangle from it. I will say range underscore rect is equal to self dot range image dot get underscore rect. Then we'll position the rectangle center. So we'll say range rect dot center is going to be equal to the center of the turret rectangle. So self.rect.center. So now both of these are going to be positioned on top of each other. The current draw method is only going to draw self.image. It doesn't draw any other variables. That means that I need to create my own draw method. We'll go all the way to the bottom here and define a draw method. It will take the arguments self and surface. And then on the surface, I will blit the image of my self.range image at self.range rect. If I now go into the main loop and I run this and I try and place down a turret, it works just as it did before. It's not showing me that circle. So that means that I can't call this draw method that's down here applying to my turrets. I can't call it anymore. This applies to the group, but because I've defined my own draw method in the class, I need to iterate through this group. So we replace this with for a turret in a turret group. And then for each individual turret, we call the draw method and we pass in the screen. So now if I run it, I'm going to have the opposite problem. When I put this down, all that's being shown is that circular image. The turret isn't shown anymore. So that means that in here, I need to tell it to draw the turret as well. We'll say surface dot blit and it's self dot image at self dot rect. Okay, so let's try this again in the main game loop. And now as I click, I can drop down these turrets and you can see this range showing me the circle in which it will shoot at the enemies. So as long as the enemy moves into the circle, then it'll be shot by the turret. I don't want that circle to always be shown though. I only want it to be shown when a turret has been selected. So we will add an additional variable to account for that. We'll come up here and we'll say self dot selected is equal to false. So that means that each turret will start off in the not selected position. And then I can make this draw method or rather this section of the draw method conditional on that variable. I'll say if self.selected, well, if it is, then we can draw this range image. But now I need a way of actually setting this variable here to true somehow. Well, I'm going to do that within the main game loop. In here, we're going to need to track the selected turret. So before I even do that, I will create a new variable right at the top where I've got my game variable section. 
this will be selected underscore turret and I will set that to none to begin with. Then we want to create a function that will allow us to select an individual turret. I've already got one up here for creating turrets, so just below it I'm going to create another one. I will say def select underscore turret and this is going to take the mouse underscore pause variable as an argument. Then the first section is just the same as the create turret. So I'll copy this down and essentially we're taking that mouse position and converting it into a title. Next, we want to check if there is a turret already at these positions. Well, we're doing that previously inside this function. So I can copy this out of here and paste this down and just correct the indentation. So what's happening is we're looking through each of the turrets inside the turret group and then we're checking if our mouse coordinates match up with that turret. If they are, then we need to return that turret out of here. Now we just need to call this function from somewhere. I'm going to do that from this event handler because down here we're already checking for mouse click events. So here we check for the mouse click and then we're looking at whether we're placing turrets. So if we're placing turrets, then I don't want to be able to select an existing turret. But if we're not, then we should be okay. So I can add an else statement in here and then I will assign a turret into my selected turret variable, which will be the output from the select turret function. Lastly, we just pass in this mouse position variable into it. This will get us most of the way there. But remember, if we go back into the turret class draw method down here, that range is only going to be drawn when this self.selected variable is set to true. So we need a way of setting that to true for the turret that's been selected. Back here in the main game, we go up to our update section and just below where we update the groups, I will add a comment to say highlight selected turret. And this is going to be determined by that variable. So if selected underscore turret, if there is a value in there and it's not none, then we're going to take that turret and we're going to set its selected variable to true. So if I test this out now and I place down a couple of turrets and then I go and click on them afterwards, they get highlighted and now you can see this range outline. If I click on the next one, it does the same thing. So I can keep placing a bunch of turrets and then I can select all of them and I can see the range that the enemy would be fired on if they entered in here. The thing is though, I don't want to have all of the turrets shown up like that. So once I select one turret, if I click somewhere else, I want that selection to be cleared. Likewise, if I click on a different turret, I want the first one to be cleared and disappear. So we need another function for this. We'll go up to the top and we have our select turret function here. So just underneath this one, I will create another one, which will be clear underscore selection. It doesn't need to take any arguments. And all this is going to do is iterate through the turret group. We'll say for turret in turret group. And then one by one, we'll set turret dot selected. We'll set that variable to false. So whenever we run this function, all of the turrets selected variables will change to false. And once again, to call this function, we go into the event handler. Anytime we've clicked the mouse and that click is inside of our game window, we want to clear the selection. I'll add a comment here to say clear selected turrets. So first of all, I'll overwrite that variable selected turret. I'll set that back to none. And then I will run the function clear selection. Then if we test this out and I place a few turrets down, so if I click on this one and then I click somewhere else, it clears. Likewise, if I click on a turret and then I click on another one, it switches from that one to this one. Now that we have the turrets range working correctly, let's make them shoot at the enemies properly. To begin with, I'll go into the turret class and I'll create a new variable here, which will be self.target and it will be set to none. This is going to track the target that the turret is aiming at. Then we can go down to just below our update method and create a new method. This one will be called pick underscore target and the arguments that it will take is self as usual and then it will take the enemy group we will pass that in in a second but it will need to be able to know where all the enemies are so that they can pick a target from them next i'll add a comment to say find an enemy to target i'll define a couple of variables so x underscore distance will be set to zero and then y underscore distance will be the same it'll be set to zero and the process of picking a target is going to be 
to check a distance to each enemy to see if it is in range. We've already defined a range for the turret, so now we can iterate through the enemies. We'll say for enemy in enemy group, and then we just check the distance between the turret and each enemy. I'll calculate my x distance, which is going to be enemy dot pause at index zero, which is the x coordinate minus self dot x. And then I will copy this down and repeat for the y distance. And I could use vectors here like I did previously, but I'm just going to keep this one a little bit simpler and use math throughout. Now that I have my x distance and the y distance, I can calculate the total distance using Pythagoras. So for this, we need to import the math module. I'll go all the way to the top and add it to my imports. So we'll import math. And then we go back down to this calculation. We'll say math.sqrt for square root. And then we square the x and y distances and sum them up. So we'll say x dist squared plus y dist squared. Now we know the distance to each enemy. We can check whether that distance is less than the turret's range. If it is, then we assign that to the target. So we'll say that self.target variable is equal to that particular enemy. We now want to call this method and we'll call it in the update method. We'll come up here and just add self.pick underscore target and pass in the enemy group. That means that this needs to be an argument that's received into the update method. So we'll put enemy group in here. We go back into the main loop and where we are updating our turrets here, we pass in the enemy group. And now we should be able to test this out. So I'll go in here and once we've picked the target, I'm just going to print out to say target selected. So let's run this game and we'll just put a turret down here. I'll select it to see the range. And then we should see that as the enemy gets closer, it now says target selected. So as soon as the enemy went into this range, the turret picked it up and was able to fire on it. But what you might have noticed here is that the turret's target acquisition and the firing aren't really connected to each other. It's just firing on its own timer, regardless of whether it has a target or not. So we need to change our update method slightly. And we'll first of all check whether we have a target. I'll add a comment to say if target picked, and then play firing animation. Then underneath I'll say if self.target so if this variable is not none, which means that we've picked something, then we're going to move this section here up inside it. So as long as we have a target, we're going to play that shooting animation. But if we don't have a target, well, then we want to search for new targets. So this section here gets indented and we just tidy that up. Now let's go back and test this out again. So I'm going to put down a turret over here and we'll just watch what happens when the enemy gets close to it. So it picks a target, it says down here, target selected, and then it just keeps on shooting. So we've kind of fixed one problem, but now we've got another one. What's happening here is that once the target is picked, it's never reset. So although the enemy leaves the turret's range, it's still the target. So what we want to do is down in this play animation section, once we complete the shooting animation, we want to remove the target. So we'll say self.target is equal to none. And that puts us back into this loop again. So because we don't have a target anymore, we're going to start searching for a target. We'll just go back and run this just to see if it's worked. I'm going to put a turret over here and it should only shoot when the enemy comes into range. And there we go. So it's taking a shot, it's taking a second shot and now it stops. And you can see that the target selected was triggered twice. So that's the targeting working correctly. And I can remove this print statement. We don't need this anymore. The next thing that I want to look at is actually having the turret aim at the enemy as well. This will require a few more variables inside the initial constructor. We go back up to the init method and where we have our update image section, we want to define an angle. So a starting angle is going to be 90 degrees. And then the way we're going to handle rotation is the same way as we did it for the enemies. We have one image, which is the original image. So I'm going to change this. And then from that original image, we create a rotated one every frame. So underneath here, we can say self.image is equal to pg.transform.rotate and then we pass in the image we're rotating which is the original image and then the angle. I also need to make this change inside our play animation method. So down here it's no longer the image that's being set, it's the original image. 
because that's the one that we're going to be using as our template to then rotate. And lastly, we need to update the draw method as well, so that at each iteration, we get a new image based on the rotated original image. So I can copy some of the code from up here, where we initially created it, and just paste it down there. So the first thing we will do inside the draw method is going to be to create our self.image, and we use the rotated image to do this. In the Pygame coordinate system, to make the turret point up, we have to subtract 90 from this angle. Then we create a rectangle from that image, and we reposition the rectangle back at self x and y. We can go back to the main loop to test this out. So I can drop a turret down here. Now it's not going to rotate yet, but we can see that it's sitting in the correct orientation. To make it actually rotate, we need to calculate the angle when it acquires a target. We go back into our turret class and go up into this pick target section. Once we have picked a target, we've assigned that enemy into the target variable. We also want to calculate our self dot angle. And we'll say that this is equal to math dot degrees. And the calculation is math dot atan two. We pass in minus y underscore distance and x underscore distance. And then if we go back to the main code and test this out, if I place down a few turrets, then what we should have is that as soon as they acquire a target, they quickly rotate towards it and then they shoot. So in this one, you notice they shot twice and it rotates around every time. 